didn't see me. Yes. Did you know that this facility once housed an artificially created black hole that released a creature which in turn almost destroyed the entire planet? Reviewing black hole, are we? How did you? Never mind. Just get it over with. Oh, thank you, Sci-Fi Channel. Oop, sorry, they're using the new logo now. S Y F Y. That's Siffy. <laughs> Anyway, mm -hmm. thank you Sci-Fi Channel for bringing us such classic cinematic works with amazing production value, heartbreaking performances, and mind-numbing plots. And yes, I mean that with the purest of irony. And since we live in St. Louis, we have the pleasure of experiencing Black Hole, directed by T Tibor Takas. Did they, did they spell that wrong? Uh, whatever. The film opens with a flyby of St. Louis with the old Bush Stadium intact. We finally land on... Wait, what? This is St. Louis Science Center Planetarium. Inside the laboratory set, scientists are hard at work colliding particles. There's a radiation leak. And they create a black hole. They all die. Movie's over. <laughs> it's worth a shot! After a reactor leak, the employees are sent in to investigate and find... a black hole. Faster than you can call bullshit on these physics, something emerges from the black hole. Raiden? Raiden attacks, and an employee tries to escape on one of those cars from Austin Powers. Dude, you can run faster! Just get out! It's the goddamn planetarium. We then cut to our lead hero scientist, Eric, played by Judd Nelson. Looks like the monster already got to him. What do you mean? He's escorted to the lab with a great piano soundtrack. Where's Hauser? He's dead. Oh, jeez. And then finds out that indeed a black hole has been birthed in the lab, and that the military leader, led by General Riker, different Riker, wants to nuke it. What? It's the strongest response listed in our contingency plans. Eric begins arguing with his bland co-scientist, Shannon. Wait, that's the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer from the movie? Random. They argue about the ethics of the experiment when he realizes that his ex-wife and daughter are in danger. Hello? Oh, Beth. Eric. Beth, listen. Look, I thought I told you we needed some space. Beth, get off the planet. Get off the planet! Eric now realizes that he has a character arc and begins moving fast amid the obnoxious music cues. Yes, but, but there is some variable, something that we're missing. An electric monster, perhaps? I'm doing science! Meanwhile, the guards investigate the tunnels and notice something odd with their compasses. It must be the plate in your head. Or the magnet in my crotch. <laughs> Smell that? Oh, uh, that was me, sir. Sorry. <laughs> Because guns worked. Have chunky soup for dinner. Make it Campbell's instead. The monster escapes the lab and begins raping power lines. This causes the black hole down below to grow and eventually move. I want two 
units in the air right now tracking this thing. So this place is pretty cool. They have a full-size Blue Angels jet here. They have whole sorts of things at this park, and oh yeah, it's still the planetarium. So the scientists follow the electric monster to a power grid, and uh, would somebody just get this guy a comb already? Eric realizes that the monster really doesn't like loud noises. We can relate. No, you imploded my rib cage. General Riker? Different Riker. General Riker. Different Riker. General Riker. Different Riker. Whatever it did to the truck, I think it did to the signal boost. What about tracking the entity? Oh, uh, did they kill it yet? You can't kill a black hole. Yeah, but you know they're gonna. Yeah, we know. Hold on, everybody. The lab begins to fall apart. What? <laughs> Oh man, I could watch that forever. But Riker realizes that he's left Sir Pukes a lot behind. Oop, never mind, this is a dumb idea. Well, this looks familiar. Totally. Follow me. The Midwestern Quantum Research Center has many functions. Apparently, one of those is sculpting gigantic life-size dinosaurs. Yeah, they would have made the movie better. <laughs>